My name is Rob Breener and I'm from the Department of Organisational Psychology at Birkbeck College, University of London. I'm going to talk to you now about the psychological contract or the real deal between employee and employer. The psychological contract is implicit. It's not written down, not legally binding and extremely broad. The employment contract is, in contrast, explicit, in written form, legally binding and usually contains only a very few pieces of information, such as hours of work or pay, and is legally binding. So what are the contents of the psychological contract? What is actually in it? Essentially, it is anything that an employee feels they give to their employer and anything they feel they should get back in return. So, for example, employees may offer loyalty, respect, high levels of effort, a willingness to take on extra work and flexibility. In return for these behaviours, employees may expect the employer to pay them at the going rate or even slightly above it, provide them with opportunities for promotion, opportunities for training and development and flexible working arrangements. One way of thinking about the psychological contract is in terms of a whole set of conditional and implicit promises. So, for example, an employee may feel that they work extremely hard, give 110%, are prepared to go the extra mile and always help out their colleagues. In return, they may expect rapid promotion and a big pay rise. In other words, they believe there is a conditional promise that if they are a model employee in this way, then they will get rewarded. It is this belief that is, in effect, driving their behaviour. And this is where the implicit bit comes in. Nobody told this employee that this was the deal. Rather, they picked it up or inferred it, perhaps from observing their colleagues, or based it on their belief that this sort of deal is fair and this is what their employer should do. The psychological contract is constantly shifting and is dynamic. New employees often have very high expectations of the deal or the psychological contract. Over time, when the so-called honeymoon period is over, employees realise that perhaps the deal is not quite as wonderful as it appeared to be when they were interviewed and offered the job. They must then either adjust their expectations and renegotiate the psychological contract or be constantly frustrated. This hints at one of the most important ways the psychological contract affects behaviour. In any relationship, when the other party breaks a promise, the reaction is fairly predictable. Anger and disappointment, withdrawal, breakdown in trust, and perhaps a reappraisal of the fairness and value of that relationship. A violation or breach of the psychological contract at work has exactly these effects. When employees feel the employer has broken a promise that was part of the psychological contract, they are likely to withdraw effort, be less cooperative, think about leaving, badmouth the organisation and take steps to adjust the psychological contract so the exchange feels more equal. It seems that on most occasions when employees feel really angry at work or want to quit, it's because of a violation of their psychological rather than their employment contract. On the other hand, when employees feel that the psychological contract is being fulfilled, that the employer is sticking to their side of the deal, employees will continue to exert effort, to be loyal and be happy to stay in the job. Many unanswered questions about the psychological contract remain, such as how and when do employees forgive the organisation when they experience a violation? With whom or with what do employees feel they have a psychological contract? Do employers and organisations also have a psychological contract with their employees? Are there different types or forms of psychological contract? In spite of these gaps in our knowledge, the psychological contract promises to be one of the most useful and insightful ways of understanding behaviour at work. This topic can be studied as part of the MSc in Organisational Psychology and the MSc in Human Resource Management. Both of these courses can be studied via distance learning. And if you'd like to learn more about the psychological contract, you may be interested in a book published by Neil Conway and myself by Oxford University Press entitled Understanding Psychological Contracts at Work.